1968, I went over to Burger Electronics. And it was on Bloomfield Avenue in Bloomfield and the corner of Bloomfield Avenue and Watsessing. And I went in there and he was an Ico dealer and he had the Ico kits. And uh, I wanted the signal injector. And he tried to talk me into getting this thing called a buzzard. It was already built. I said, no, I'd, I'd like to have the Ico. And they also had the Mosquito, which was more money, but I couldn't afford that. So I bought this Ico and I brought it home and it's a simple kit. It comes with a coil. It comes with a germanium transistor. Remember that, it's germanium, not a silicon transistor. The circuit won't work with a, with a germanium or a silicon transistor, only a germanium. The way it sits, the way it stands, the way it's made. So if you want to build one, you're going to need a germanium transistor. So I bought it, I put the kit together, and it worked. I fixed so many radios with it. You go along, and you, you can buzz along. Now here's, here's my version of it. It works exactly like the real thing. It's in an Altoid scan. When you're holding this case, you're in the ground. Here's the hot that comes out. Here's the button to turn it on and off. When you open it up, here's your circuit. You got 200 millihenry chokes back to back, a germanium transistor, and an output capacitor. Two batteries, two triple A's. That's all there is to it. Now, let me show you or let you hear what it sounds like. All right, put the radio on. Now you can you can go all the way from the from the audio section of the radio all the way to the to the antenna with it. Alright now hold on. In a couple minutes I will show you what the waveform looks like. This circuit is not like any of them. Now if you go on the conferences, which you know how I, I pick on those guys, and I always have a guy that always gives me a negative comment on my videos, which means nothing anymore. But uh, this thing puts out a 50 volt peak to peak signal at a hundred uh, one kilohertz. Now you say, well, how could it put out 50 volts? Well, it's got a coil in it. Oh yes, yeah, coil. Every time the the waveform collapses in the coil. It produces a high voltage spike at 50 volts. That's why this is different than the multi vibrators. The multi vibrators put out a lower frequent, a lower output voltage. They also don't go as low in frequency. This thing has two honking coils, and it's it's a different circuit. You know, on the groups, oh, just make a multi vibrator. It's not the same unit. And I knew that right away. I made after my the unit went bad. Uh, you know, I pushed on the back of it, and the guts come flying out of the case. Because after I built it, it worked for many, uh, many months, and it was built into a flashlight case, and it was a pen light flashlight. And when you push the button on the back, it would put pressure on the battery, which was a three volt battery inside. Put pressure on that down into the circuit, down into the tip, and the guts would shoot out onto the floor. And after that happened several times, the coil broke. And then I always yearned for the unit. I went back to Burger. He didn't have them anymore. So I built one with a multivibrator. And it never put out the oomph that you need that this circuit puts out. So over the years, as I got smarter and thought about it, I come up with a way of making this with over-the-counter parts. That's how simple this is. All right. So now it's got two microhenry coils. A germanium transistor, it's a PNP battery, and a 0 0.001 microfarad output. Now, ta da! I wish I had a better camera. I really wish I did, but this is the best I can do uh, as far as I can move it out a little further out. All right, this is the test bed. This is what you should do after you go online and, and put in ICO. PSI-1, find the schematic, get yourself a germanium transistor, and wire the circuit up. It's that simple. I don't want to go into this, but this is the superior signal injector when working with tubes. Now, it won't help you if you have a low signal going through the radio. Say the radio is just low. 
the injector will go through it stage by stage and you'll never figure out uh, where the problem is. And that's one of the problems with all signal injectors. Unless you have a value of putting a certain amount of signal on the antenna and then following it through the set and then they give you specific points that you'll get a certain amount of signal. If you don't have that, no signal injector is going to help you. But you'll know when you get, well, you'll know when you got to fix because the radio will work better. But in the case of a dead section, this thing works incredibly well. Now, I want to show you the waveform. It's a blocking oscillator. Let's get this in position here. Like I told you, I wish I had a better... Such a delay on this freaking computer and camera and the whole thing. It really makes my life miserable. All right, let's try not. Let's get the pick. Let's get the glare out. All right, let's just see what it looks like. I'm putting it on. All right, there's the signal. See, it's a bunch of spikes going negative. That's the secret. Those are 50 volt spikes, and that's what makes this circuit work so well. And I just wanted to show it to you. And the secret, my secret, is for the coil. Look at that. That tripod's being a jerk. Uh, two coils. Back end to end. Now, when you put the circuit on and it doesn't work, we've just reversed the two wires on one of the coils. And it'll oscillate. If you've got the germanium transistor. Now, you have to have a, a PNP germanium. Almost any will work. This is not, this circuit is really not for a beginner. Uh, it it has, only has a few parts. But if you put, you order the wrong um, chokes, which they're 100 millihenry chokes. They have a, um, a ferret core in them. Or if you put them in, back, uh, you have, they have them wired backwards. It won't oscillate. You have to have, you have a primary and a secondary coil, and it's spelt on the, on on the on the schematic. It's there. It's all there for you. But if you don't know what you're doing, this isn't going to work. But this is my go-to signal generator. And when you're holding it, you're the ground. And this there's a 0.01001 capacitor that shields you from getting a shock. It keeps the High voltage from coming in here and getting you and that's how I co designed it and if you go reading online they're all telling you to uh, uh, build a multi vibrator and then uh, one guy will score one of these oh, I scored one on eBay never puts it together uh, and by buying it he deprives someone that might have used might have used it from having it and that's that's how everything is uh, I finally realized that with people I know I rant a lot it's because uh, I realize what people are really about. You know, like the, like the guy is asking about the coil in one of the conferences. How many turns do you think? Oh, I just built a multivibrator. The multivibrator one doesn't go as low, low in frequency. With this thing, you can ring out speakers and that with this. You can't do that with the multivibrator one. It doesn't have enough power. And like I said, they had built it in a, um, a pen light flashlight case. And when you push the button on the end, it would push down enough pressure down through the unit and it would shoot out the end. The whole guts would just come out onto the floor. And that was the flaw of the design. But see, Ico had already got their money. And Ico's were not the greatest kits. Uh, a lot of times you had to take a file to one of the parts, like in the grid dip meter. And I went through that with the, I told you the story with the grid dip meter, but it's in the instructions. You might have to sand this or uh, take a file and, and file this off or pre-fit this before you put it together and the guys I work with just drew it together and then oh it rubs it doesn't work right mine worked perfectly then can you can you take mine and fix it and uh, then they have no use for a grid depth meter when I questioned them they didn't even know what it was for they just wanted me to take theirs and fix it so they they were they could show some look I built a grid depth meter blah, blah, blah. that's how they were that's how people are now I do the extra work as you might notice, and I stayed with this, and you know, I held off for a while, but you know, this circuit is probably not perfect. You might get one, it might not always, it might not always oscillate for you, but this thing's been unstoppable, 
And one day I just got the idea to put it in an Altoids case. An Altoids case. Now the uh, the battery box itself is riveted in. Here's the you can see the two rivets on the bottom. See how nice and flush they are? Because if you put bolts, you can't get the batteries in. You got to go with rivets. And uh, I can't think of it. I think that's it on this. I think that's it. All right. That's it.